Hey, you guys. I just wanted to uh, make a small video on some American pocket knives I own. Um, I do own also the Buck Canoe and the Buck Stockman. But, unfortunately, these were the ones that they have coming out of their China plant. <laughs> So, yeah, we got this here Camillus Army knife. Uh, I don't know what they call it. Demo knife, milk knife, whatever, right? Then I got this uh, new Camp King I picked up the other day. And this is from 76. This is from the early 70s, I would imagine. This was my pocket boy. Pocket? <laughs> pocket boy. This was mine from 1970. It's a... Uh, a Camillus Boy Scout knife. Um, then I got this. This is a PAL blade. I don't... My father gave it to me, so I don't know where he got it from. I have no idea. This is PAL blade company. Uh, this is really a beautiful knife. It's solid, and it's got such a smooth open... It just, it's just... It's nice. You know? So, that... I carry that often... Then I have my uh, little case uh, Stockman. I have this. This was made by the Ideal Company. Really, really inexpensive knife. I seen a guy sell one of these for a dollar and he couldn't sell it. <laughs> I ain't selling mine for a buck, man. Because I've never seen one in this shape. This was from the 50s and this thing is in primo shape. Uh, I... I'll just keep it. That's all. It's just here. Um, then we got this. This is a, a homemade lockback. It's got a beautiful handle. And um, this here, my cousin had made. Uh, it's stamped on a tang here. The guy's name was Dave Brittany. It was made in 1983. And my cousin handed it off to me. It's a really cool knife. It's sturdy and sharp as anything. It's uh, your typical buck look-alike, but it's got a fancier handle. Alrighty. And then, of course, my, my buck 110, which has the uh, ebony handles. This one here, here, this one's automatic. Uh, I'm looking to trade this one. Yeah, I need to get the automatics out of my house. So, here you go. Close it. But that's a beautiful knife. I only wore it once or twice, and I got pulled over one day, and a cop saw it. He was really, really nice. He let me go. And uh, I guess it's because of my age. I was twice his age, and you know what I'm saying? A respect thing. He told me, though, in New York, you can carry this knife if you have a $15 hunting license on you, okay? All you got to do is say, I'm on my way to go hunting. Imagine that. Can you imagine that? What a loophole. <laughs> what a bunch of garbage. But anyway, that's my little collection of American knives. And then I got... I got a couple of, I got a knife from Ireland, and here's another thing I got that's American, man, I, this is also probably from the 30s or 40s, but I have no idea what it is, man, it is, it's not a knife, it's a slip joint, it opens up, but here, let me, let me just, uh, see if I can open this, hold on, let me use my teeth. There you go. Okay. It is... It looks like a feeler gauge. It's really flimsy. And I, I just don't know what it is. Hey, yo, if anybody knows what this is, please let me know because I've been going nuts for almost a year. But anyway, yeah. If these, if I, if I would have bought these, these would have been part of my American, but they're not... They are Chinese-made, overlooked by Americans because it's an American company. 
Same with Charade, uh, Charade Imperial, Buck, uh, Rough Rider, uh, uh, G man. There are so many now that that moved over to uh, China. Let me see, Buck, Rough Rider, Charade, Camillus, just just a lot. Anyway, if you notice on these knives, on the back of this knife, it's very, the edges are sharp, very square. But on this one, I really, I forgot what happened. Oh, I know what happened. One of the springs were proud. They were hanging up high. So I, uh, I took it to a belt. And then I started doing it by hand. So now these edges are just really smooth. The whole thing's just rounded off nice. Actually, really, really gave it a beautiful look. Yeah, you're looking at a $20 knife from China that doesn't have a single gap or a single problem. So this is why I tend to not agree with people about Chinese knives. A lot of them are nice. You know, um, this particular knife, there's a lot of uh, videos on the internet where they compare this 371 to the 301, and there's hardly any difference. As a matter of fact, they say that these blades are prettier looking. They are pretty looking blades. Again, I can't open it because I'm a one-handed dude. <laughs> I mean, here. Yeah. I got two hands. I just don't have a <laughs> a guy to help me with the uh, hold the hold the camera. So yeah. Anyway, those are just a few of my American knives. I have a couple upstairs in my safe. I have a uh, a lot of Italian stilettos, but those are over my pop's house. You know. Oh look! I been, oh, I dropped the phone. I've been getting into antique and doing the antiquing on stainless steel. And uh look at that. I mean, for stainless steel, it's it's a hard thing to do. It takes a little while. But you know what? It's worth it. Listen to this. This has a nice snap. Yeah. Anyway, guys. Let me pull it together. I got some people in my family that need help today. I'm going to give them a hand. But once again, these are my Americans. Bam.